name is Suzanne. Uh, I've been a member of Abundant Life Church since the very beginning. Was there for the first meeting to say, hey, do we want to start a church? Um, I think everybody knows my testimony, but actually this church was my first answered prayer as a new believer. I was baptized in a church that I didn't feel was the right place for me, and I began to ask God to show me a safe place where I could go and learn about him. Um, after I was baptized, the pastor said that the best Bible study student he'd ever had took everything he said verbatim and didn't question him. And in that moment, I knew maybe four scriptures, but one of the ones I knew was that search out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I knew that after all of those years, I had finally connected with God. And I wasn't going to let somebody, a person, come in between me and God and, and try to break up that connection. I knew that that was precious, and I knew that that was special. And so my prayer was, Lord, we need, I need a safe place to go where I can learn about you, where I can worship you, where I can grow as a new believer in you. And, and I think it was a week later, Darlene called. Well, actually, Darlene and I worked together back then. That's how she was, became my mother in the Lord. And Darlene... Um, she said, well, I think we're going to have a meeting at my son-in-law's house about starting a church. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew. I said, this is it. She goes, well, Suzanne, we're just going to have a meeting to see if maybe. I said, no, Darlene, I know. And she's like, oh, cute, zealous, new believer. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> but I knew in my heart of hearts that this was the beginning of something special. And 17 years later, <laughs> I think last month, 17 years later from last June, um, just in June, uh, we are still here today, and I still believe with all my heart this is a very, very special place, and it's precious. Um, I don't see anybody here that has ever wanted to get in between you and God. I think I've, we've just had nothing but people that want to come and encourage each other and grow together and get closer to the Lord. And throughout my journey, I've met all sorts of interesting people. <laughs> online dating. <laughs> when I was single, my single years, it was very hard as a Christian to be single in the church. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. For many years, it was very difficult. I was a new, I was a single mom, and it was hard to be single. And one of the, one of the friends I made, I, I met him on a dating website, but we've been friends this whole time for probably 15 years now. For some reason, he put something on Facebook, and I just felt compelled to respond. I kind of usually just read and, you know, whatever, and I don't put a lot on Facebook. I tend to read a lot, but I don't share a lot. I don't really know why, but I guess I just feel like I don't really always have something to share. But I just, I don't know, I just, I feel like what he's talking about here is relevant to us as a body. And he, and he, he talks a lot, um, he's former military, so he talks a lot in the military analogies. And he says, point men in modern military parlance, to take point, to walk point, to be on point, or to be a point man means to assume the first and most exposed position in a combat military formation. That is the leading soldier unit advancing through hostile or unsecured territory. The soldier, vehicle, or unit on point is frequently the first to take hostile fire. The inherent risks of taking point create a need for constant and extreme operational alertness. Are you walking spiritual point? then what are you sensing, what are you feeling, what are you hearing, what are you seeing, sound off. And for some reason this really struck a chord with me because I've always felt like we're digging the wells, like we're, 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 the, we're taking the resistance, we're going into uncharted territory in the spirit. We're, I just feel like we're in a time of intense spiritual warfare. Like for me personally, it's been everything and anything not to get me to come. Like there were five blo cars blocking the lane just to get here tonight and I know that the enemy doesn't want us to come together. The enemy does not want us to come and grow, to come and edify the Lord, to come and change this play, to come and change each of us, to change this city, to change this neighborhood, this state, this nation. And I feel like we are walking spiritual point as a body here. This message of grace, the truth of the simplicity of the gospel is not easily received. Because it's not about you, and it's not about me. You know, it's, it's like I talked about. There's, it requires a security in who you are. It, it requires that firm, solid connection. You have got to be rooted and grounded. But it can't be about you. It's not your ministry. And, and what I wrote is that the time of personal preparation is over. The time of it being about me and my holiness and my worthiness and my, my preparation, that time has ended. 
Now is the time for the body of Christ to arise. Now is the time for us to work together and come together in the fullness. God wants to manifest through his children. It will be the body of Christ, the resemblance of him, taking everybody, working together in unity and peace and love for him to return. And I just, I, I feel like we play an integral part of that. Yes. There's people all over that, you know, and I, I got a bunch of new friend requests. I don't, <laughs> you know, it's just, you post something like, ooh, like-minded, like-minded, and then you get all these friend requests. But I just feel like God is bringing, like, I don't know, like, and some of the things that I was reading, some of the other comments really made me think. I, I used to see things. I was a seer, right? I, I, God would show me things, and I would see things, like watching a TV show in my mind, like an imagination. And I thought maybe that was just because I was a new believer and that was how he was teaching me, but I just feel like the reception's been bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think it's been that he wants to or doesn't want to. I think he always is. It's that the reception has been bad. And he was saying something about the satellites. The satellites are rising again and that the time for the hearing and the seeing are coming back. And I'm convinced that we can hear and we can see all we want, but if we don't speak it out, it does nobody any good. And that's, I think, the word that I gave that the seers will see. He who has an ear, let him hear. He who has eyes, let him see. We need to speak. All the sons and daughters shall prophesy. What is that? It's simply to speak what God is saying to you. And so I feel like the time of watching, of of letting things kind of just go are, are ending. It's time to speak, and that's why I guess I feel compelled to, you know, like just speak the word, just an encouraging word. There's not a whole lot of encouragement on Facebook all the time. And, you know, rather than just watching, I guess I feel like God's nudging me and all of us, I think, to speak, and people need those words. They need words of encouragement. It's not always scripture. Sometimes they just need kindness. Right. Sometimes they need love. Everybody needs grace. And... Um, I don't know, I just, I feel like it's time. So I encourage you, when you see things, when you hear things, speak. That's what makes our services so special, is that everybody has something to share. Everybody has something to provide. And God can weave this tapestry. And it's amazing to me. Like, I tried to explain it to my husband. He doesn't get it. <laughs> He's like, and, and Craig is like, but, you know, but then people talk, and then they pray, and then you sing songs. And I said, but Craig, have you listened? Have you paid attention? It's all the same thing. God speaks to us from the very beginning of the service. Half the time when we're opening, we're just sharing what's on our heart. But God uses that, confirms it through the testimonies because it stirs something up in the listeners, and then we feel compelled to share. And then Mike, who's listening in the spirit, or, or, or Roberto, whoever's leading worship, has listened in the spirit and are picking songs that talk about the same things. And then by the time Nathan gets up here, we've already heard the word. He's simply expounding on it. <laughs> I mean, God makes himself so abundantly clear but we have to be alert like he said it requires a special alertness so I encourage you to listen to seek to knock and God will open he'll open our eyes he'll open our ears that's what Joel was talking about Joel chapter 2 all of this all your sons and daughters we are all sons and daughters all your sons and daughters will prophesy they'll dream dreams you're going to see things you're going to hear things you're going to know things that don't make any sense to you but God will put someone in your path, someone in your life that's going to go, I needed that. Or, you know, that's exactly what God was showing me, and you're going to be dumbfounded. It happens all the time. So I just encourage you, prophesy, speak, and be encouraged. Amen. And God will be edified in all. Yes. In Jesus' name. Does anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies? Yeah, I felt that when Mike texted earlier, that's exactly what was my impression. This is a spiritual attack. It's been a spiritual attack. And I, I, to pray against the heaviness, like there's a pressing down on the chest and there's a squeezing that I just keep sensing. I don't know if that's what the symptoms are, but that's what I was sensing in the spirit, that it has to let go and it has to just leave them alone. And especially when there's no real explanation for it. No, exactly. Like
Amen. Amen. Spend the word of God uh, and time with God's people. Yeah. You know, that's what Paul said. Forsake not setting yourself together. Yeah. You can all be there because you do. You build one another up mm -hmm. and you keep those going because you never know what everybody's going through. Right. But your word, just like you said, your word can make all the difference. Yes. Hey, God did this for me. Okay. Yes. He's not a respecter of persons. He did it for this person. You can do it for me. Yeah. And we just want to thank the Lord. Amen. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for your prayers for my family. My uncle John passed away. Um, he passed away the morning um, when I left that Wednesday night. Um, I was able to be with him um, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Um, it was just my aunt, um, his stepdaughter, and myself. We were with him. He sang happy birthday to my niece. It was his stepdaughter's birthday. About 20 minutes later, just gone. No, so I mean, it was just a, it was quick. It was, you know, he wasn't suffering and. He was laughing and we were joking and we had a precious time together. So I'm thankful that he went quickly. I've never thought of dementia as a blessing, but he didn't suffer because of his dementia. So in this case, it was an absolute blessing. And um, just continue to pray for my Aunt Nancy and my niece, Nicole, as they grieve. Uh, my Uncle John, was I was born on his birthday and he died on Nicole's birthday. And my dad was looking at the program after the, the memorial service and said, you know, he really loved his girl. <laughs> <laughs> chose special days <laughs> so God works all things for good and my dad was supposed to have had a hip transplant surgery on the 17th and thank God it was postponed I don't know that I, I couldn't handle it <laughs> would have been too much and as, I, as upset as my dad was God knew what was coming and so uh, my dad will have his hip surgery at the end of August so he's a little anxious about it as can be expected at his age so all right, let's stand and go to the Lord tonight. Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. we love you. Hallelujah. We love you. It's our good pleasure to come before you tonight to lift up every prayer, Lord, every praise, Lord, to you. Thank you for the blessings, Lord. Thank you that your answers to our prayers are yea and amen. I thank you that you are faithful, Lord. I thank you. Thank you for those that are drawn to you, Lord, that ask for the praise, Lord. Tonight we come before you, Lord, that this body, this body has needs, Lord, that we speak before you tonight, Lord. Let your healing power be loosed for Cindy. Jesus, you touch that body, you touch those lungs. Lord, whatever it is, you know. It's not for the doctors to decide. It's not for them to decide the symptoms and the medicines, Lord. It's for you to heal her, to set her free from these attacks, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus, for Sally, for Lord, for these for respiratory diseases, Lord, that they will breathe freely, Lord. That their lungs, for their healing. bronchioles, that they will breathe freely, Lord, with no pain, with no healing. discomfort, Lord. Healing wind, Jesus. Lord. Healing Jesus. wind, Lord. Yes, Lord. Healing wind, Lord. Healing wind, Lord. Healing wind, Lord. Breathe. That we were healed by your stripes, Lord. That we were healed by your stripes, Lord. That nothing, nothing is more powerful than the blood of Jesus spent for our healing, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your healing. Thank you.
That's what I was going to talk about on Sunday. can't be here or if you have any prayer requests, um, give them to one of us on Facebook or text messages and we'll be sure to um, share them when we pray for anybody Amen. that can't be here. Even though you're not here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Um, and then are we invited? Yes. The, yes. Yeah. Yeah. the 18th uh, from 5 to 7 at Boston Summit tonight. Uh, and so if people want the prayer, we're doing a party six hour worship and praise thing and open entry at Heartland
will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you. Lord, I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Lord, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, therefore I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function, and I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Um, Toby, if you want to come take the offering tonight. And uh, John and Sheila welcome their first granddaughter this week. Jayla May was born. Six pounds, 12 inches, 12 ounces, I think, and 18 inches long and doing wonderfully. Y'all think I should be with Cindy tonight, but she said, I want you here. She said, come here to intercede. Do what the Lord has called you to do. I don't know if she get a chance to watch the broadcast live from Mercy right now. I took her laptop up, so if she's watching, great. Otherwise, it's being recorded. But we're declaring the things off our family and our loved ones. In the name of Jesus.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just bless your name tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for your favor, Lord, that's with us each and every day. We thank you for your grace, Lord, that's sufficient for every situation, every circumstance, every individual. We just bless you tonight, Lord. You are a great and a mighty God. Lord, there's none like you. You alone are God. And we praise you and worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you for being here tonight. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the testimonies tonight. As Suzanne was saying, how they come together, and it just never ceases to amaze me how God does that. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to literally be preaching to the choir tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> It's okay, it's not a bad thing, praise God. But uh, I want to talk to you about the church. Uh, the church in general, but also the specific church here, us. Amen. And uh, I hope nobody takes this the wrong way. I'm not a rebuking type of preacher. and uh, I'm going to get into this a little bit more on Sunday, maybe broad and go into a little bit different areas. But I just think that um, as, as much as we talk about testimonies and uh, prophetic words and uh, words of knowledge and, and uh, all the gifts of the Spirit for that matter, uh, how they operate within the body and how it uh, ministers to each one of us. It, this isn't as Suzanne said, most of the time the message has been already put out there before I ever get to the pulpit. I end up being an echo of what the Holy Spirit's already saying in the, in the, throughout the congregation, the church. And uh, I don't think people realize how critically important it is uh, that the body does come together. And we, I, I just don't think, I think we have been played down so much over the years in as far as religion is concerned about the uh, uh, power and the impact that comes from each one of us. We've looked so much to a pastor or to an evangelist or a, a preacher of some kind thinking that they had all the answers when in fact y'all have Jesus. He is the answer, amen, and he's wanting to speak to all of us. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't a place for the pastor, for evangelists and teachers and so forth. There is, obviously, but it's, it's just a position. It's not any different, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, I got's the same one you got. You know, I mean, that's true for all of us, and, and God wants to speak through each and every one of us, as Suzanne, I think, mentioned tonight. Um, I would that you all prophesy. That's what Paul said, you know, and so... It's what Roberto was saying is true as well. And what happens is when things do begin to really manifest, I believe they already have. They've manifested in us, but there are others that God's reaching for. And when this begins to manifest in terms of numbers and the people that we're able to reach, we need people to reach them. Yeah. The pastor isn't going to reach them. I can tell you that right now. It's, if, if it isn't the body reaching them, they're not going to get reached. And a lot of times the way they're going to get reached is right here in a church service. When somebody does have a word of knowledge, when somebody does share a testimony, you don't have a clue, as Tim was saying, what kind of an impact that can have on a person just sitting that you've never even met before, you don't know anything about, and yet the Holy Spirit knows the most minute details of their life. And you can share something you think has got nothing to do with them, and they're saying, my God, he just read my mail. You know, I mean, that's the way the Holy Spirit can do it. So, and that's the way we have to be functioning as a body. So let's quickly, we'll get into this so I don't keep you late tonight. Uh, Roberto, if you would, let's, let's just read Acts chapter 9, verse 4, and that'll get us a place to start, and, and we'll just kind of go from there. This is kind of a, I'm just touching a few things here tonight uh, and keeping it simple, but um, 
which is what I do the best. Praise the Lord. Keep it simple. Huh? Amen. It's my nature. Simple. But uh, Sunday, I, the Lord has been giving me some other things, and I'm just, I feel like that's the way he's going unless something happens between now and then. That's kind of where we'll go. But anyway. And, of course, we know this is the story of Paul. He's on his way to Damascus to rout out and harass and arrest and uh, so forth the, the body, the church, people that are believers in Christ. And so he meets Jesus, and Paul gets knocked off his horse by this bright light, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, Paul's testimony, when you, when you really read this, it's powerful, and it's also revelatory. There, there is a powerful revelation here in what Paul is talking about, and it's about how we should see the church, the body of Christ. It's how we should see one another. Each one of us is the church, and of course, cumulatively, uh, collectively, we are the church. But if there's only one of us, we're the church, right? I mean, but the, as we come together, we form a body of believers or the body of Christ. Now, let's read this again. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Well, now, this is uh, Acts 9, but if you go back to Acts chapter 1, Jesus has already left the earth. He's gone back to heaven, right? Amen. So uh, Paul never laid a hand on Jesus. Jesus was already gone back to heaven before Paul really got started in his persecution deal, you know. So Paul never laid a hand on Jesus, but Jesus is telling Paul that whatever he's done to the church is also done to Jesus. Amen? So Jesus loves us. And Jesus identifies with us. He identifies with us completely. We need to recognize this as believers. Amen? You can't separate Jesus from us. You cannot separate Jesus from the church, from any body of believers. You can't. He's part of it. Amen? We are the bride. We're united, amen, with Jesus. So how much do we love the church? Praise the Lord. Jesus shed his blood for it. Amen? He never takes the church lightly. He never takes any of us lightly. He certainly does not take the body, the corporate body together, the church, lightly. Right? I mean, we understand this. It's not a building. It's not the place. It's the people. It's the body of Christ. It is the church. And Jesus takes it seriously. Praise the Lord. So we ought to take it seriously. Mm, and a hush fell over the room. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. I'm just saying, it always sounds like this coming from the pastor, but I wasn't always a pastor either. You know, I mean... I just went to church. Amen. I just went and was part of the church body. Praise the Lord. So take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Praise the Lord. Now, take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now, that's partly my responsibility, but it's also your responsibility. We're all overseeing the body of Christ. We're all interacting. That's what we're doing when we're testifying. We're ministering. Can you say amen? Amen. I mean, come on. When you give a testimony, you're ministering. This isn't just talk. It's not just verbiage. When you have a word of knowledge, when you have a, a, a prophetic word, when you're just speaking because God lays something on your heart, if you're just saying, I just want to praise the Lord today because this is what he did, you're ministering. Yeah. You're ministering to the body. Yeah. Amen? So how involved are we? How connected are we as a body? You know what I'm saying? Amen? Amen? fringe? Are we just kind of hanging around the edges and once in a while we come or, you know what I mean? No, I mean, listen, I get it. There's health reasons, there's work schedules, there's family, 
There's, I mean, there's reasons for not being at church. I get that, and I'm not criticizing people or judging. I'm just saying, is it, is it really important to us? Is our coming together important? I mean, do, do we feel like it really has value? Sometimes we just got to back up. Look, this is not an indictment because we all go through phases and we go through situations and struggles and times and so forth where there's pressures here and pressures there and the struggle to be there and to be a part of it is greater than it is at other times. I get that and I, and I totally empathize with it. But at the same time, we need to, we need to have a, a sense of connection and commitment, not to me, not, not to this building, but to the church, to the people, to the body. That's why, as Tim's saying, how much they appreciate the prayers. Look, we, we all feel that way, right? I mean, we, we covet your prayers. We do. We, we know that they're valid, they're real, they're powerful, they're dynamic, and they make a difference in our lives. Right? right. So we're not just talking to hear the wind blow we really need one another right. more than we actually realize most of the time, I think. Right. Right. Praise the Lord. So let's look again. Let's look at this in Philemon, uh, verse 20. One chapter there, so it's just verse 20. Now I'll remind you, if you haven't read this lately, it's just a one-chapter book, and it's just a letter Paul wrote to a church in the house of this group. And, uh, and it's, he's writing it to Philemon, who had a slave. And my understanding of this, uh, in the context of the story is the slave was not a saved individual. He was not saved until he ran away. He ends up, somehow he ends up with Paul in Rome. And Paul introduces him to Jesus, and the man gets saved. Amen. Right? So... In fact, if you read it, Paul's writing to Philemon, and he says, hey, he left a slave, but he's coming back a brother. Amen. And I expect you and the church to treat him as such, you know. So, praise the Lord. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord. And that word bowels, if you look it up, it's actually heart. So he's saying, look, brother, let me, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Amen. In other words, stir me up, renew me, excite me about what God's doing in your church and with your people, with, with this young man that's coming back. And I, I want this to be the right kind of thing. I want it to be a celebration, you know. And so part of our calling as a Christian is to refresh the hearts of our brothers and sisters. That's why we take the time and get criticized by some people who, uh, you know, aren't used to this sort of thing, to testify, right. to, to give praise reports, to re have prayer requests. Listen, I get touched sometimes by prayer requests. I get as moved by a prayer request sometimes as I do by a testimony or a praise report. Right. So it, but it refreshes us. Why? Because it connects us with the reality of God. That God is real, that God is everywhere, and most importantly, God is with us, individually and collectively. So uh, we need to understand that part of what God has called us to be, each one of us as a part of the church, is to be a refresher, is to refresh the hearts of brothers and sisters. And you can't do that if you're not here. Praise the Lord. I think uh, because, again, uh, of the... Uh, of the history or the tradition of the church, a lot of times we just feel like it's not that important if I'm there or not. It's only affecting me, right? Because we have been given that kind of attitude that it's only about what some preacher is going to say or do or some activity that's going to take place that's really important. No, you are important. I'm talking about in God's mind. This is critical that we refresh one another. You're not going to get refreshed at the office, probably. You're not going to you know, get refreshed that often on the job. If you do, it's going to be you that's getting the, doing the refreshing. You understand what I'm saying? You're drawing it out of what you're seeing around you. It isn't people coming to you and ministering to you. It's you 
you know, reaping the benefits of the ministry that you're doing. I mean, you can't bless somebody without getting blessed. You know that. So, I mean, there's a, there's a positive side to that. But in his letter to Philemon, Paul asked Philemon to welcome back this Onesimus, this runaway slave. Let's look at this in verses 16 and 18, still in Philemon, if you will, Roberto. Now, not now as a servant, but above a servant. Now, he's talking about this young man coming back. A brother beloved, especially to me. But how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord? Now, isn't that, think about that. That's beautiful. Not now as a servant, but above a servant. This guy has just been elevated to my brother, who was a servant. But no more. Now he's a brother, beloved, especially to me. Especially to me, but how much more unto thee? Both in the flesh and in the Lord. Why? Because now he's a brother. Now he can communicate. Now he can relate to this Jesus that Philemon has. Praise the Lord. So Paul asked Philemon to erase all of the wrongs committed against him by this Onesimus and welcome him as a brother in Christ. Now, if that isn't a message the world needs to hear, and we need to hear it, we need to know that the grace of God is also, amen, from us. That we're going to love one another, even when we screw up, even when we don't do it perfect, even when we're not everything we would like to be and others may find fault with it. We're going to still love. We're still going to extend that same grace Hey, it was abundantly poured out on me and is every day. I got nothing to lose by giving it away to somebody else, by just being forgiving, by just loving, by just accepting. And let God do the, let the Holy Spirit do the, the, the hard work. Amen. We got the easy job. All we got to do is love them. All we got to do is release grace to them and let them know that they're valuable to God and to us. Praise the Lord. That's for, that's for sinners, but that's for saints. We all need to be accepted. We all need to know that, we're, that we have value to others. Amen? Amen? So look at this. Okay, look at verse 21 here. He said if he wronged him, put it on my account. I'll pay it. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. Amen. See, Paul asked Philemon to live out his faith in a real way, in a way that it can be seen, in a way that others can actually see the love of God that he's received passed on to somebody else. Amen? And he asked him to do it in this act of kindness that will basically rock that church. This little church that's in their house is going to get hit by a tsunami of love. Because they're expecting this guy's coming back and he's in deep doo-doo. He's in big trouble. And instead of that, he's going to be embraced and loved as a brother and valued as part of the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse, verse 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual. Amen. So that your faith actually has some effect somewhere, somehow, some way. May become effectual. By the, how? By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You want to know how to make your faith effective? Acknowledge all the good that's in you because of Jesus Christ. How do you do that? By just walking around telling everybody, I'm really good. Jesus said so, or by actually loving people, by actually forgiving people, by actually reaching out to people and ministering to them, however God leads you to do it. It may be through a message, but it may just be through a few words. It may just be a hug. It, you, you'd be surprised the people in the world who never get hugged. I mean, not even in their own house. They don't have any contact with people that 
legitimately care. When they have contact physically, it's usually a punch to the head or a slap across the face or, you know, and words are spoken always in anger and frustration. I mean, you can't imagine what it's like for some people just to hear a kind word, as it was said here tonight. Just to hear somebody speak in a, in a calm voice, not angry, not jealous, not bitter, not hurtful, but just, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. And you might be surprised to find that it even touches people that are saved. Praise the Lord. Because forgiveness is jaw-dropping. It really is. Grace refreshes. It does. When you think about the grace of God, it's like a renewal. I mean, it's like you get pumped up again. You think, I can make another day out of this. I can do this, you know. I, I'll be okay, amen. And love revives. Love brings back, you know, hope and expectation and, and dreams and visions and plans and, and all the things that might be, could be, should be, amen. Kindness. Kindness alone energizes. I've seen it. Just being nice to somebody who is drooping around. You've been to the dollar store? Oh, man. Sometimes there's, there's a couple of, I go to the one in Ankeny. I go to the one in Mitchellville quite a bit. And there's a gal there. I won't say which one because you might go looking for her. But she, I mean, this gal is depressed all the time. And, and I don't know what her life is, but I know that she's just morose and depressed. And I've gone in there a couple of times and just, talk to her. I mean, not, you know, just being nice, you know, not, not with any agenda other than just to talk to her. And it's like she perks up. When I'm leaving, it's, see you later, Nate, you know, and, and the next person comes, how are you doing today? When before, oh, you know, they didn't give us enough money to cash any checks, and we can't give any cash any big bills, you know, and all that. And I hear her mumbling. And it's, you know, I'm telling you, it just happens. You, you be kind to somebody, and it's almost creates an energy. Amen? I've seen it in restaurants. Sally and I have seen it over and over again. You just start, waitresses, waiters, they're all bummed out, they're freaking out, they can't take care of everybody, and half the people are complaining because they got somebody else's meal, or they didn't get it done just the way they want to, and we're just kind of joking around with them, and pretty soon they keep coming back to our table. You know, on a regular, you know, it's like they just run over and do what they got to do over there so they can come back over and talk to us for a while, you know? Honestly, it's great. It's there, it energizes them. Sally will tell you. It, we have good time, you know. Praise the Lord. So, amen. Acceptance is awesome. It's awesome to know that you're accepted. That people actually accept you. Even if they know you've got some flaws. And they still accept you. It's a great feeling. It's a great Great sensation. And integrity inspires. This is not about you and me in the sense that I'm not pointing people to me. It's about Jesus, the other one. You know? Pointing them to him. But I got to do the pointing. So unless I do it legitimately with integrity, in other words, if I'm not being graceful, if I'm not being kind, if I'm not being accepting, then I'm giving a distorted picture when I point to Jesus. So they see me, and uh, it's like the old saying, uh, uh, you know, I can't hear you f for what you're doing. Right. You know, I, I can't hear you for what I'm seeing, so to speak. So uh, praise the Lord. And the truth is, in every way, the gospel, the true gospel, the real gospel, invigorates. It does give life. It does bring life. It's invigorating. It's, it's exciting. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go back to Philemon again, verse 20. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. Paul says, I, I want to see your faith in action, and that will be a refreshing. That will that will cause me to rejoice in the Lord. 
because I see God's moving in your life. I see the Lord working through you and in you, right? Okay, verse 7. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the heart or the hearts of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. This act of kindness, amen, he says the hearts of the saints are refreshed by you. Praise the Lord. That includes your relationship with the church. Our hearts are refreshed by you, by what you say, by being here, by connecting, by caring. Amen? I'm just saying this. If you claim Christ, claim Christ's people. Because you can't do one without the other. Praise the Lord. If you claim Christ, claim us. Because we need each other. We, we really do. Praise the Lord. Your walk, your faith, and listen to me, it's divinely designed to urge others along in the faith. That's a God's honest truth. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's the church and you specifically were designed to urge others. When you got born again, you became a new creation in Christ. And you were designed from before the foundation of the world in Christ to do this thing. To be refreshing to others. To be an encourager. To be a faither. Praise the Lord. In order to help others. If you see a brother who stumbles and is weak, what's it say? Kick him while he's down? No, it says lift him up. Encourage him. Be a blessing. Praise the Lord. And we don't know where everybody is every moment of every day. Right? I mean, we don't know everything that's going on in their lives. So usually we just come in with a smile and praise the Lord. But we may really be struggling with stuff. You know what I'm saying? And need encouragement. But we're not going to come and say, please encourage me today. We've already whined and cried out to God about it. Praise the Lord. And now God is trying to encourage. Now God is trying to refresh, but he needs us to do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at, let's look at this. John 7, verses 38 and 39. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, right? So out of us is going to flow the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. But once we're born again, the Holy Spirit is like a river. It wants to flow because there's thirsty people in every church service. Some are saved, some are not saved, but they've got a thirst. They've got a hunger. They've got something that's going on that they need an outside influence. Now, they have the Holy Spirit, but somehow they, it's, it's, it's stagnant in the sense that they're overwhelmed by whatever their situation or their circumstance is. So they need to have that Holy Spirit in them refreshed or awoken, awake, awakened, praise the Lord, by the outflow of the Spirit from you. So your testimony, the words that you speak. I mean, look, when I'm sitting over here and I'm here and Suzanne say what she's saying, Roberto's saying what he's saying, Tim's saying what he's saying, and I'm saying, thank you, Holy Spirit. Right? It's refreshing me. It's, it's encouraging me. It's uh, empowering me in a sense that you heard the Lord. Now, I can make a mistake. I can miss the Lord sometimes. But out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. So I may have missed it. Y'all couldn't be missing it the same way I'm missing it, you know? Praise the Lord. Somebody must have got it right. And when you hear it two or three times, now you're beginning to say, whoa, maybe God is trying to say something here, right? Well, that how many other people, as Suzanne was talking to her husband and, and son, that's what we recognize. That's what we understand. It isn't that we're not necessarily looking for diversity in the sense of what is being said, although that's okay. What we're really looking for is 
where's the Holy Spirit moving here? What is he saying? What does God really want to focus on? What does he want to, what does he want to get across here? Well, when you start hearing it multiple times in just different ways, now you're starting to say, okay, I get it. I, I, the ears that I had, they now hear, <laughs> right? Because you're hearing by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So, hallelujah. God has pre-wired us to be a source of refreshment to one another. Now, I can, I can tell you that's the truth, because when I come in, on Sundays especially, and I see people, I can be struggling with stuff, and because believe me, I do, just like everybody else does, family, situation, circumstances, everything else. But just seeing the faces of people, I feel better. I just do. And when you start to interact with them, you feel even better. It is refreshing. There's something about like believers. It's something about the Holy Spirit. I mean, he's the Holy Spirit. He's all the Holy Spirit in me, but he's also all the Holy Spirit in you. You know what I'm saying? But it's like he gets bigger. He isn't any bigger, but it's just like he gets bigger because I'm more aware when I see other people that are going, that I know they're struggling, they got issues, they got stuff, and it's just encouraging. It's refreshing. And I believe it is for everybody, you know, for all of us. Praise the Lord. So I'm telling you, it's not by accident these things happen. It's a shame that more churches don't do it because they're depriving themselves of tremendous ministry. You just got to be willing to roll the dice, you know, in a sense, and let, let the Holy Spirit minister. Because each person, the Holy Spirit, he, because each one of us is unique, the Holy Spirit can do things through each one of us that he can't do through just one of us. You know what I'm saying? It makes it more real. It makes it more valid. And, and we're pre-wired for this. It's like we short-circuit everything if we don't do it. God wired us to be a refreshing, like a river flowing. You know, it's, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Anybody been in a river, it will refresh you in a hurry to the point of freaking out sometimes. I mean, cold, running water, right? It'll refresh you. And I'm saying that's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what he wants to do. But if all the body isn't functioning, the Holy Spirit is limited to what body there is here, right? Praise the Lord. So our faith in action is meant to remind each other of Jesus, of his lordship, amen, of his goodness, of his love, of his grace. And the fact that we're forgiven, empowered, and called to something great. Every one of us feels that. I mean, don't we, don't we all think something, there's something God's wanting to do? It's because he's put greatness in us, in Christ. And we need to operate that greatness by the way we were wired to operate. By grace, by love, by forgiveness, by mercy, by words. Now, empowering words. Words that bless, words that encourage, words that remind us that Jesus is Lord, that he is seated on the throne, that he is in control, that he does have the answer to whatever our situation or circumstance is. And we need that from one another because you're not going to find it out there. There it's a mockery. We are mocked. He is mocked. Everything about it is, is ridiculed to some degree. We have a responsibility and are, are called to carry that out where we go. That's why we need each other so much to renew and to refresh that in us so that when we go back out on Monday morning and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, we're empowered by the Holy Spirit. We're being led by the Spirit. We're encouraged even when everything around us is discouraging. Praise the Lord. We need each other. I need you. And I'm not Uncle Sam. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been called to something great. And that's to follow Jesus 
and to encourage others to do the same. Saints and sinners. Surround yourself with people that refresh your faith. You ever been around people that just drain you like a tub, like a bathtub, you know? <laughs> you just feel it going. That's okay. Sometimes you've got to deal with them. Sometimes you've got to do reach out to them, and you've got to give, you know? But, man, we need each other. We need to be around one another. We need to be with people that refresh us and that we can be a refreshing to. That's, that's what we were designed for. That's, that's our natural makeup. You ever notice? It just, it's not that hard when you're with people of like faith. It just flows. I mean, it just does. Because that's the way we were created. That's how we were created. And that's what God's trying to bring out of us. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verses 24 and 25. There's a couple more scriptures here and we'll wrap up. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Would that be a good thing? Yeah. Consider, let me consider you, to provoke you unto love and to good works. How? By loving you. By doing good to you. Ever, ever had that happen? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Dean and I were talking earlier we all know this. You get, you walk into a room, and there's somebody that's just cranky and mean and hate. Man, it isn't long before you start picking up some vibes. Beach Boys were right about that. You can pick up some good vibrations, and you can get some bad vibrations. And it isn't long before you start feeling hostile, right? I mean, people just being real aggressive and in your face and confrontational and nasty. And pretty soon, you you're, you're getting sucked right into that. Well, it works the other way as well. If you come with love, if you come with grace, if you come with forgiveness, it's infectious too. It can, it can alter the situation and the circumstances. And that's what God's called us to. Don't beat yourself up when you drop the ball. Because we do it sometimes. I mean, sometimes, I remember Tim was talking about some issues going on at work last week. It gets, you, it gets to you, right? And you may not lash out, but you're, it's like a weight. You know, you're just kind of carrying this thing around trying to get something resolved and you don't know how it's going to all play out. But that's where this focus back to Jesus and, and us coming together, one another. And all of a sudden, what seemed to be a really bad and nasty, all of a sudden it doesn't seem so big a deal after all. Maybe God's already doing something there. God's already working in that, you know. And that's that, that's just the way it is. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Thank you, Tim. Praise the Lord. See what I mean about the Holy Spirit? Praise the Lord. But not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Roberta was talking about this day that's approaching. Amen? And so... As that day approaches, there's a greater need for our connecting with one another and encouraging one another. Why? Because God is doing something, and the enemy doesn't like it. And he can't do anything to God. So he's got to get us in the flesh so that he can slow the process down or get us distracted from what it is that God's doing and focusing on some minutia that really has nothing to do with God's ability or God's power but it gets us introverted and looking at ourselves and getting depressed and bummed out and everything else. So we need each other. And the closer we get to breakthrough, the more we need each other. You would think that's almost counterintuitive. You'd think that, well, man, once it happens, whoa, Katie, bar the door. We're just riding the wave. No, believe me. When it starts happening, the devil will rear his head and stick his nose in everywhere he can. And that will need each other even more once we begin to actually see more and more of the manifestation of God, we'll need each other more then than we ever have. Praise the Lord. And believe me, the unsaved are going to need you even more. Because the enemy's resisting everywhere. Praise the Lord. So it's talking about Jesus returning. Hey, you're looking at him. I'm looking at the return of Christ. 
Right? I mean, he sent back his spirit. I'm, t- I'm not saying he's not going to come again into the rapture and so forth, but I'm saying right now, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for us. I'm looking for Jesus in us to manifest so that the world can see him now. Be too late for the world when he comes and raptures us out of here. Right. If they haven't seen him yet, they're not going to see him. Right. Unless they get martyred and so on, you know, the whole history there. But right now, We are all Jesus that they're going to see. And in fact, you and I are the Jesus we're going to see. Praise the Lord. That's why we need to be together. That's why we need to come together. Again, this is not a rebuke. I understand. Hey, look, I was gone for two and a half weeks. I enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying this is evil, you know, to be gone. I'm just saying we need to reevaluate the reasons why we are here so that we have a sense of responsibility and connection with one another, because this is about us. Jesus cares about us. We need to care about each other. He loves the church so much that he shed his blood for it. How how do we feel about it, right? Do we have the same kind of priorities that Jesus has? This isn't to put guilt or condemnation on anybody. You're saved. You're going to heaven, okay? I'm just saying. God has a purpose, and that's for him to be manifested in and through us. So we need to kind of see what his priorities are. And whatever those priorities are, they ought to be our priorities. Praise the Lord. Okay, Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. For as we have many members in one body... For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Now think about that. That's like, you know, Tim's my arm. Toby's my leg. I'm your foot. You know, I'm somebody's hand. We we are so, that's the way God sees us. We are so interconnected. That we are one body, and all of these members are interconnected. So what happens, and we know the story, so what happens if the hand doesn't show up? Well, it can get kind of clumsy if you're right-handed, and you've got to eat left-handed. <laughs> right? Amen? What happens if no hands show up? Now you're lapping like a dog. You've got to, you know what I'm saying? You're limited because of the members who aren't here. You, you limit what, I know it sounds insane, but you limit what the Holy Spirit can do in ministry. It's critical. And I don't think people realize how important they are to God and to the rest of the body. I really don't. I mean, it's not, people are not here because they're vindictive or they think I'm going to really get even with them by now going, no. They just most of the time think it's not that big a deal if I'm not there. You know, somebody will be preaching, they'll have the worship team, there'll be prayer, everything will be all right. But that's really not true. Every time somebody who is a part of the body is not here, everybody pays a price to some degree. Because we don't know what they might have said, what the Holy Ghost might have done through them. We don't know how he might have been wired or she might have been wired for a specific purpose for that service without even knowing it. How many times have you come and really didn't have, think you had anything to say or you really didn't have a testimony or anything else? But you get here and you hear somebody say something and immediately the Holy Spirit trips something in you and you feel like, I I really need to share this. I don't necessarily just want to share it. I feel like I really have to share this, you know? That's the Holy Spirit. That's God reaching for somebody. Praise the Lord. So it's important. Amen? Amen. So we being many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. We, we don't realize how God, how, how intricately connected and woven this body is the way God sees it. We see us as individual members and so forth. God doesn't. He sees it as just like this. And he wants it to function that way. We need it to function that way, to be effective. It's not just about numbers. It's about being effectual, being effective. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, where two or three come together, 
God can do anything. So we don't need 5,000 people here. It'd be great if we had them just because it would show how many people were reaching and the impact that we could have. But we don't have to have that to be effective. We can be effective with what we have. We just need everybody to be effective. Everybody needs to be effective because it fulfills that greatness in them as well. It isn't just about doing for others. It's about you can't minister without being ministered to. Holy Spirit can't flow through you without touching you, without impacting you. I can tell you, anybody that's ever preached, anybody that's ever given a testimony or anything else knows there's an anointing that comes. You can be wore out. You can be exhausted. There's been plenty of times I've come here just felt like crap. Get up and start preaching. When I get all done, it's like, I can't believe it's like I just slept, slept eight hours. You know, I'm feeling great. It's, it's, it happens. Because you can't minister without being ministered to. You can't do what God's calling you to do without receiving the blessing from it. Praise the Lord. So it's his body of which you are a part. And Jesus bought this body with his life. So don't withhold yours from her. I mean, if it was important enough for him to give his life for, we shouldn't withhold our life from it, right? Let me close with this scripture. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. There are things, I'm telling you, there are exceeding abundant things that God wants to do for people in this church. But he needs this church to do it. You understand what I'm saying? To release their faith for these things. Praise the Lord. He's able to do. He can do it. But he's going to do it through the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, through us. We've got to speak the word, as was said here tonight. We've got to prophesy. We've got to be willing to share testimonies and, and praise reports, what God's doing. To bring, somebody else may not be at that place of faith right now that you just came through. So that you could say, praise the Lord. I love when Tim's talking about, I want to thank everybody for praying. Look, you may think, well, you know, that's what we do. Yeah, but it's great to see when God moves in a miraculous way as a result of prayer. It can be an encouragement for somebody else who's struggling with faith about something that they're praying about. And they can say, hey, if he did it for Tim and Leah, he'll do it for me. Amen. If he did that thing for them, he'll do this thing for me, if I believe. If I can get people to pray with me and, and we'll just trust God, right? Yeah. Unto him be glory where? In the church, you want to see the glory of God? I'll tell you where the glory of God is going to show up. In the church, in the body of Christ. God is glorified through us. When we reach out, when we minister, when we prophesy, when we allow the gifts of the Spirit to operate through us, when we testify and, and, and give praise reports, and when we have prayer requests, God is glorified in the church. And sinners who have never seen the glory of God will experience it by just being here within the confines of this building with the body of Christ. Functioning the way it's supposed to function, right? Right, right? Praise the Lord. So, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. World without end. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just finish with this. I said that was my last scripture, but <laughs> his grace is sufficient. Praise the Lord. Here's how Paul ends his brief letter to Philemon. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. That's to the man that he's writing to and saying, come on, man. Give me some joy. Refresh me. Thank you for the refreshing. Thank you for the joy. And then he says, and the grace of God be with your spirits. Hallelujah. That's my prayer for y'all. Amen. And for this church. That we rise up as a body, believers in Christ, and let God do what only God can do. Amen. Give him a platform to work on and work through, and then just watch him go. That's all you got to do is just loose the Holy Spirit and watch him go. See what he does. Hallelujah. And rejoice in it one with another. Hallelujah. God bless you.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I love all of you. God bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Hope to see you all back here Sunday. God bless. Friday night, House of Prayer. Friday night, house of prayer. Be here or be square. <laughs>